What's up everybody, Tom McGraw here. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. We're gonna be going over how to run Rust in a Docker container for local development. That's right, how to run Rust in a Docker container for local development using a Docker Compose file. So what does this mean? Why are we doing this, you might ask? Well, running Rust in Docker gives us a repeatable Rust environment that we can use across machines. This means that as long as you have Docker installed, that's key, you have to have Docker installed. But as long as you have Docker installed on any machine, you don't need Rust installed and can run Rust in this Docker container so you have a repeatable environment across machines. It also lets you share your code with somebody else who has Docker installed and they too can run your Rust code in this container without having to install Rust on a machine. This is good in case you wanna just try out Rust and don't wanna to commit to installing it on your local machine and lets you use Rust Rust is gonna be able to use cargo, we're gonna be able to use the Rust compiler, and if you ever wanna get rid of it, you just destroy the container, and that's it. So, let's get started. First things first, you gotta install Docker. On the Docker setup page, which is linked below in the show notes, you can see we have a installer for Mac, Windows, and Linux. I'm running on a Windows machine, however, I'm using a Linux server, so I followed the Docker for Linux install instructions prior to this video and already have Docker installed. So once you have Docker installed, you'll be good to go. Next thing worth noting is today we're gonna to be using the pre-built Rust official Docker image. This means that we don't have to build an image ourselves. If you use Docker for before, you may have had a Docker file where you've specified your own custom image and how to build it. But here we're gonna be using the pre-built Rust image with our Docker compose file. We're not gonna be building a Docker file image from scratch because we're not planning on deploying this and the Rust one has what we need already. As I mentioned, it's got cargo, it's got the Rust compiler and everything we need to get started with writing Rust programs. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is create a directory for my project. Call it Rust Docker Setup. I'm gonna CD into that directory and just open up my editor, Visual Studio Code. <laughs> Close these. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these errors. All right, now what I'm gonna do is create a file called docker-compose.yaml, and it has to be called this, and you can see it populated the little blue whale there. So the docker-compose file is special because it's gonna let us compose different Docker services. So normally you could use this if you were building, for example, a full stack web application where you had a server and a front end and maybe a database, you could specify those services as separate services and ensure that they get started together using Docker Compose. In our case, we're only gonna be dealing with one service, but it's pretty straightforward for one service as well. So if you need to look at how to create a Docker Compose file, you can find here in the docs.docker.com, there's a great page on building a Compose file. And this is linked below in the show notes as well. So here's an example of a Docker Compose file. We're gonna copy this and just paste it here and modify it a bit. So first things first, version 3.8, that's the latest version of the Docker Compose. We're gonna stick with that. But services, they have two services here. We only need one, so we're gonna get rid of this. Um, here you can see they have a web service. We're gonna call ours dev, so we're gonna change that. They've exposed some ports. We're not running a server, so we can get rid of this. And here they specified build with dot. What this means is they're saying build this from a local image using a Docker file in the current directory. We're not gonna be building from a Docker file, as I mentioned, we're gonna be building from our Rust pre-built image. So what I can specify instead is image, and I'm gonna specify Rust version 1.47. And if you're not sure what version to use, you can check out the Docker Hub page for the Rust official image, and they have all the different images below, and they're all built off Linux. So we're gonna have a Linux uh, kernel that we'll be able to execute our code in. So once you've specified this in the Docker Compose, the next thing we need to do is set up a volumes property. And what the volumes property is gonna let us do is link code from our actual working computer here that we're working on and link it to the code in the Docker container. So that means when we make changes on our local file system, those changes are reflected in the Docker container. This way we don't have to edit the code in the Docker container with Vim or some built-in editor. We can use our friendly VS code and modify files locally and they'll be reflected in the Docker container. So I wanna specify what folder locally I wanna to map to Docker. So I'm gonna say I wanna map a local directory called projects, which I'll create in a second, to a folder 
on my container also called projects. Now, these don't need to have the same name. I'm just choosing to do so here. You could have called this app or anything you like, and you can use any directory here you like as well. But I'm just gonna stick with projects. The next thing I need to specify is an environment variable. Rust requires the user environment variable. So I'm just gonna say user and then equals Tom. I'm just gonna use my name for that. This is so that Rust doesn't complain when the user environment variable is missing. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. We're gonna create that projects directory. And there we go. Now we have our projects directory. Next thing we're gonna do is start our Rust container. So this Docker Compose is all you need to get running with that image. So the command we're gonna run is docker compose run dash dash rm dev. Let me move over here so I'm out of your way. What this is specifying is we're gonna be using docker compose to run this file. We've specified run so that we're telling it to run our Docker container and keep it running. And then we specify dash dash rm dev. Dev is the name of the service. And what we're telling it here is we wanna run the Docker container we want to run the dev service and we want to attach to the terminal of the container so we can execute our code within that container. I'm going to, I might as well install that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and run this command now. And so what it's going to do is it's going to download that image from Docker Hub. So it's downloading that Rust image and all of its dependencies. And you can see that here. Now, if you've already downloaded the Rust image and have gone through this step, when you run Docker Compose run again, it will skip this step and you'll be put right into your container, right into the terminal. So this is only necessary the first time you download the image. And I'll show you in a second how to list out the images that have been downloaded. So it's extracting, pulling some packages. There's the IDs for those images and the dependencies here. And as soon as it's done, we can list out our image and see that we have a Rust image. All right, so now it's creating our Rust Docker setup dev container. And now it's given us a terminal where we can access our container. So this is a terminal within our container. And I can see here it has a regular directory system like any Linux system would have. And you can see here we have our projects directory. So it created that directory for us because we specified it in volumes. Now I'm going to CD into the projects directory. And since we have the Rust image, like I mentioned, we have cargo, we have the Rust compiler. So I can run cargo new hello world. And there we go. It created the binary application hello world. And you can see here, if we look at our local file system, there we go. We have projects hello world source main. Rust and we have a Rust file, hello world. And I can run it using cargo run. Let me just go into hello world. I'll run cargo run. And there we go, hello world, it ran it. Now to show that I can modify this and that it's linked to the container, let's just go ahead and make a modification to this. So we'll say hello YouTube. All right, and now I'm gonna run cargo run to see that that change took effect. And there you go, hello YouTube's printed out. So you can see that our local file system is linked now to the file system in our Docker container. So pretty cool. So we can do full Rust development. We didn't need to install Rust on our local machine. We can work off our local machine and we have everything we need to compile Rust, use Cargo, all in our Rust Docker container for development. So very cool. Now, another cool use case for this. There's a great repo called Rustlings. Rustlings are small Rust exercises. And to set up Rustlings, you would normally have to install using these instructions. So if you're on Mac, you would have to have some prerequisites, right? You'd have to have Xcode select installed and Xcode and developer tools. Well, the good news is if you're running in a the Rust image from Docker Hub in a container, you're on Linux, so you don't need to worry about that step. So if you're on a Mac device and you wanna try Rustlings, you can set up that Docker container and try Rustlings without having the necessary other steps like Xcode and all that. So here we're on Linux. I'm just going to run this command and we'll check out Rustlings. So I go here. I'm going to just CD up to the products directory, run this command.
and now it's installing rustlings. So once this is done downloading, we'll be able to execute the rustlings program and go through some exercises without having anything else installed. We're just inside our container. And when we're ready to get rid of this, if we don't want to use it anymore, we're done. We can just remove our container and we're clean and free. We didn't, we were free and clear. We didn't install rust or anything like that. So we'll let this finish downloading. Awesome. It's finished downloading. So now what I can do is I can run rustlings CD into the rustlings folder. And as you can see here, the step to run it is rustlings watch. And there we go. We're running rustlings and you can see it gives you some errors and the goal of rustlings is to try to fix them. So you have a rustlings folder. In this case, we're using the variables exercise. And that's it. You're all set with Rust. You have a working container where you can try out Rustlings, modify stuff on your local directory, and have it reflected in your Docker container. Now, one thing worth noting is if you're on Macs, you will have no problem editing files on your local directory and having them save in your container. If you are on Linux, you will have to change ownership of those files to make sure that your edits actually work on your container. And you can use the chone command to do so. But on Macs, you'll have no issues. Everything will save and be reflected. But if when you do run your code, you get a error where it's specifying that it cannot have access or write access, you simply use the chone command to change the ownership of those files. I'm going to show that right now. So here I have my rustlings file that I've run and it's complaining. So I'm going to go to my variables, variables one. I'm going to make the change that I want to get this code to compile. And I save and you can see here, I got unable to write file because it's owned by the container. You can see access permission denied. So what I can do is I can run a command to change ownership of everything in the projects directory. So to do that, I'm going to do sudo chone dash R my username and the directory that I want to change ownership of. If you don't know your directory name, you can just say, who am I? And then I'll tell you who you are, what your user is. So I'm just gonna run this. I've now changed the ownership and I can go ahead and save that file, no problem. And now Rustlings is rerunning my tests. It's the beauty of this. It's an awesome uh, exercise. And look, successfully ran exercise variables, variables one RS. Awesome, so that's it. That's how you run Rust in a Docker container with a simple Docker Compose. Obviously, you can get more complex. This just very much scratches the surface, but you have a repeatable Rust development environment with Cargo, Rust compiler, and everything installed. So really easy to use, great stuff. It only required the Docker Compose. And I highly encourage it if you want to try out Rust and don't want to deal with installing it on your machine, it's a great way to go. As always, if you're looking for the previous videos, you can find them here on my channel on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button for notifications of future videos and content. Also, if you've been following along, we go live on Twitch where we stream from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. We've been going through the Rust book and we're actually gonna go through the Rustlings exercises that you saw here today briefly. If you want notifications on when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter. It's Tom underscore McGurl. You can see the handle right above there. And we'll post everything on YouTube when we're done. So thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're enjoying Rust. And try it out in the dark container. See what you think. All right. Have a good night.